I am in um, Palestine. Uh, it's a place called uh, Al Arab Camp. It's a refugee camp um, that was established after 1948 when people were kicked out of uh, you know their original villages uh, in historical Palestine. And this camp is based between Bethlehem and Hebron. I was born in there because my family came after 1948 and um, they were provided with tents in the beginning. Um, uh, to, and, and because the United Nations under a program called the Onarwa was completely meant to be helping Palestinians uh, they provided the land by renting this land from a village nearby this area for 99 years. And <laughs> now the, the ironic is, the irony is, um, is how did they know that the occupation will last for 99 years? This is something I don't know. I, I never find an answer for that. But uh, uh, my family came, of course, and generation after generation, and I was born and raised in here for most of my life, I would say. My name is uh, Nabil Al-Rai, and uh, I'm an artist. Um, I served as a, an artistic director at the Freedom Theatre in uh, Jenin Refugee Camp. Uh, this is a different camp in the north of Palestine. Um, I worked there for over 13 years uh, in a theater. Now I'm a writer and theater director, but also an actor in most of the time in cinema, movies. Um, and uh, I am a Palestinian. <laughs> um, and, and I, of course, uh, uh, try all the time to speak all over the places. I was invited and prepared uh, different papers in different cities around the world about Palestine and uh, about art in Palestine in different occasions, different universities from you know America to across Europe and uh, different places. Uh, I have a great connection to Portugal because I was married to a Portuguese and I have two daughters in there right now. I haven't seen for over a year now because of uh, COVID-19 and all the restrictions. Uh, but besides that, also one important reason that I can share with you that uh, it's also my identity and my ID and travel document is all, always a problem because I'm holding a Palestinian passport. It's not easy for me to uh, have a visa so I can enter Europe uh, uh, whenever I want or whenever I need. Even though, you know, I'm married for, um, I was married for um, uh, quite a good time and I have two daughters. Sometimes I to be honest with you, I face a lot of problems with the Portuguese consulate giving me an access as normal access to Portugal. For example, last time I asked for a visa, um, I have to give them again um, uh, all the legal papers that I have my daughters in there. They needed the, like a bank account. They, and I was like, oh my God, they these guys knew me all these years and and still i'm facing all of all of that so just to mention that as a side note let me first put you in a, in um, or try to uh, divide and define what was going on uh, since the beginning and maybe for the people who don't know when i mention a refugee camp for example as a starting point i must say the refugee I'm talking, the refugee camp that I'm talking about right now is one square kilometer holding 14,000 people. So the spot where I live in one square kilometer, and I'm 
uh, I would invite people to think about that. Uh, imagine you are in Portugal and 14,000 people living in one square kilometer. These people are originally refugees from different villages. I can count over 22 to 30 different villages and I can mention names because I know them. And my original village is called Iraq al Manshi. Nowadays, of course, they call it Kiryat Gat as a, an Israeli uh, village. So these people was kicked out of their homeland and became refugees within inside of Palestine. Um, and among uh, these people, uh, uh, there is different camps in Palestine and in Gaza itself originally from big cities to small villages around historical Palestine. So the, the main current situation that we are in right now started where the plan was that the prime minister of uh, Israel, Bibi Netanyahu, um, trying to one pol politically, it, because his situation is very critical, because he have... Um, uh, corrupted cases in the court, in the Israeli court, and he wanted to run away from going to jail. So he decided to take a move by taking a step of going to a place called Sheikh Jarrah in Jerusalem, where people are living for many, many years. But let me mention something. These people are living in these houses. They were also refugees from big cities in historical Palestine, and they were moved in 1967. They were giving illegal papers under the government of Jordan to be legal and to live in their houses. Now, Netanyahu, according to his plan and according to his court, decided that these houses doesn't belong to these Palestinians, and we will kick them out simply as this, take them out of their houses, throw them to the street, and give them, give these houses to settlers in order for him to win uh, the next election and be an, in charge again. He did not expect that this move will be, you know, he have to be, uh, pay a big price for that. And he did not expect that Palestinian people will stand up and refuse that. And that was in a parallel where people are practicing Ramadan, you know, the most holy um, uh, month where Muslims are practicing fasting and praying in Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem, um, also attacked the uh, Al-Aqsa Mosque. And this is where the whole point started for, the, for what is going on. Now, the, the beautiful thing that is happening because not everything is dark. And I'm proudly saying that as a Palestinian, this is the first time in my whole entire life I witness that Palestinians within Palestine 48, and I will come to this point and I explain to people what, what I mean. Palestine 48 is uprising. Uh, Gaza is uprising, West Bank is uh, uprising, and people uh, as Palestinians who are living as refugees outside of Palestine, like in Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, and all over the place, are uprising and refusing what is going on. So this, um, this uh, movement, he did not expect, expect it to happen. When people screamed in Al-Aqsa Mosque and in Jerusalem for help, Gaza actually stood and they started to fight back because what people don't know, and, uh, and this is the Israeli propaganda among uh, also many different um, uh, certain media around the world are uh, presenting the story that, uh, and, and actually putting the whole narrative that Hamas, as they call it, uh, is attacking Israel uh, with rockets. I think Hamas is a, is a party as any other parties in Palestine. They are resisting the occupation. Um, uh, they are defending over 2 million people in Gaza, the biggest jail on earth. 
the biggest jail again on earth. Um, uh, the, the Gaza living under siege for over 14 years right now, 14 years. And when I say siege, that means certain kind of materials, food, basics, electricity, water, they are not allowed to use all of that, including traveling and and um, and the 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 big story is that Israel tried to do is to divide Palestinians from connecting from each other, and this is the point where I want to go back and explain to people when I say Palestine forty eight, when I say Palestine forty eight, these are most of the cities that Palestinian were left after most of the Palestinians were kicked out of their homelands, Israel kept some of these families and they called them Arab Israelis. I mean, ask yourself a question, how come a 73 years old state have an Arab Israelis? So these Arab are called Arab because the Zionists narrative want to call them that and i refuse many many times to say these are arab israelis because these are palestinians but to give them uh, a privilege israel decided to give them the citizenship of israel which is you know an id and a passport and that's why they call them arab israelis because they want to say we are look at us you know we are very uh, multicultural uh, um, state, democratic, people have space and people have the freedom of speech, freedom of everything. That is a big lie, in fact, because on the ground, uh, you have a quality of citizenship. The first uh, quality of a citizenship is the Israeli, Jewish, European settlers who came to uh, Palestine. Even among Jewish themselves, they divided. Uh, there is a huge difference from a European settler who came, an American settler who came to Palestine, and an Ethiopian, for example, who came from Africa. And you can divide that to the point where you arrive to the Palestinians who are living in Palestine 48 uh, nowadays. Now, all these people, after this move, actually stood up and said, there is no way beside uh, protecting our identity as Palestinians. We are Palestinians. We want to go back to our roots. Beside that, Gaza is completely separate from any other cities and, um, in, in Palestine. We can't go to Gaza. They can't visit us. Last time I was in Gaza when I was 10 years old. Imagine if you are talking about Lisboa and Porto, right? So Porto is in the north and all other cities around Portugal, like, you know, Coimbra, whatever, you can, we can count different cities. They don't have an access to come and see Portugal, uh, Porto. And Porto have no access to see all other cities in, in Portugal. This is exactly what is hap happening. And the West Bank, they give it a title. The title is that there is what is called a Palestinian authority. What is a Palestinian authority? Under the Oslo Agreement that happens in 1993, there was what it's called, uh, and I'm sorry for my words, a bullshit agreement called Oslo Agreement. It meant to be um, first step, giving the Palestinians a self-authority that will rule um, life in Palestine. Uh, uh, and this starting point started from two cities. One, it's called Jericho. The other city is Gaza. And um, uh, this authority came under this agreement to give the Palestinians the right of self um ruling, if I might say, as an authority, a local authority. But until today, none of this agreement was implemented. The whole world uh, uh, screamed, you know, and was happy that something could move 
And we ourselves, we went, you know, with olives to to meet the people who came from outside. Uh, we were happy that finally something could move ahead and we, you know, we find a solution for that. But uh, Israel simply doesn't want a Palestinian state to happen, even though we are talking about that less than 20% of the whole historical Palestine that the Palestinians have to accept, including that if that state will be, they have no control on borders, on airports, and so on. I, we can, we can, I need a lot of time to explain alone what is Oslo Agreement. Now, going back to your question about uh, why we don't see, you know, um, a neutral coverage of what is happening in the media and why is this so difficult? Although it, there is a huge change around the world where it comes from a very free people standing and sharing stories of Palestinians in here. But we have to remember very well <clears throat> that when Israel was created, it was supported by big countries uh, like America, the UK, France, and we can count these people. They built a narrative and the first starting point of this narrative saying, we are giving a land, an empty land for people without land. So a land without people for people without land. This is the narrative that Israel and the Zionist um, movement has presented to the world that they came to a place, you know, it's empty one, there is no people, you have some camels here and there, and some Bedouins, you know, as if we don't exist. And you know, we don't have language or we don't have history. It's like it's like a Lentejo. here in El we, we also have few people we, we this, the, the don't give the right of Spanish people came to invite in, uh, invite us. It's the same thing. <laughs> exactly. By the way, I love the wine from Alentejo. I, I, I like it very much. It's very, very nice wine from there. Well, sorry, uh, I interrupt you. Sorry. No, it's fine. Now, I have to mention something very important and people might don't know uh, because uh, I had these questions before that they think, people think that Palestinians are only Muslims. And the fact is, no, Palestinians were Muslims, Jews, and Christians. So before we go uh, farther, I have to make a huge definition between Judaism, Jewish people, and Zionism and the Israeli people. It must be put in this way, because none of us as Muslims, as Christians, have something to do or against the Jewish people. Never. Our uh, war is an existence one. We fight to exist. And it happens to be that these Israelis uh, started this and advocate for the Zionists and Zionism and the funny thing I can share with you that who started Zionism is a group of atheists, non-believers, who actually um, um, tricked the Jewish people saying, this is the promised land and this what God uh, gave us and it's for us, you know. Anyway, um, um, they built a strong narrative that people believed all these years. No wonder, no wonder that it will take time for it to change. And it is changing. Why? Because simply um, a lie cannot go farther. It can live for a certain time, but it cannot continue because people nowadays have an access to technology, have an access to social media. Uh, people can share different stories. They meet us, you know. When 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 we meet, for example, in Europe, and some people met me for the first time, they were like thinking that, 
how does a Palestinian look like, for example? And I had to explain that. And I, I never felt offended because this is such an innocent uh, question that comes from people and through the people. They want to know more because they didn't know. And I always excuse people and say, people need to take the right time to understand. Uh, and to process the information inside of their heads. And um, because also there is a misdirection by government, especially, and I'm not talking here about people. People are always free and want to, you know, uh, support all the just causes that exist in this world, all over the place, you know. But governments, uh, especially when they have an interest with uh, a, uh, a crossing Israel, um, uh, and and the power, the superpower around the world, especially America, um, they will be presenting uh, uh, alternative information for people and hide some other information from people to see and know. Uh, that's why we feel and we notice, you know, we notice, and I'm sure you you do as well, if you provide nowadays an information about Palestine and Gaza, you would face different problems uh, through your account on Facebook, Instagram, and many people actually complained about uh, about that. It's part of the problem, and it's part of the big fight that we're facing nowadays. But as we say, you know, um, uh, as we have this side of hiding the truth, we have the other side that people either came, visited, and so people on the ground here in Palestine or people from Palestine traveled and shared their stories out. And now again, the social media doesn't leave anything beside uh, covering. I know sometimes this is very dangerous because you don't know what to believe, but this is exactly where our mission have to come because we have so many different resources. We have to study them until we arrive to the truth. That must take some time. And don't worry if it takes time, but in the end, you will arrive to the the, the point uh, that you want to understand. The most important um, thing to say that we have been fighting for over 73 years to exist now. To be honest with you, and I'm very honest with you, um, we felt in a certain time we have been left alone because if i want to alienate you i can i can do one simple thing the simple thing i can do i can come to you and convince you that your neighbor is a bad man how can i do that is to come to you every day and say your neighbor is a murderer your neighbor is a bad man and we have a saying in Arabic saying repeating words is much more powerful than magic. So as I said, you know, the, the Zionist narrative was completely established around the world. The world felt that maybe we are not important. Um, I think the Palestinian felt many times that they're left alone. And in a certain time, we thought either we die or we live. But the one thing we know that we don't have to give up, we will be fighting to the last drop of our blood to bring back our rights and our homeland. I did not to choose, I did not choose to be born in a refugee camp. I had a beautiful village like Santa Maria de Feira, like, uh, like any other places around. We felt that this world is completely trapped by the, the political universal structure that is stronger than us and simply supporting Israel in every move that they are taking day after day. Now, again, facts are changing because people are awakening and, and they are experiencing things on the ground. Because, you know, I've received some Portuguese people when I used to work at the, the Freedom Theater. And um, it, it, it happens rarely because I know, you know, uh, 
<clears throat> people would prefer to go to Algarve, to the beach, and, and spend some time in there. Uh, and, and travel to other places, which is gone. And, and I'm, uh, I'm not saying this is bad, of course, but rarely could I could meet Portuguese people. I met people, many people from uh, other places in, in Europe. But it's very different when we, when we meet face to face, when we talk to each other as human beings and say, listen, we are fighting all of us and I'm not nationalistic at all. When I say I'm Palestinian, I'm still fighting as a Palestinian because we still have a cause to fight for. I am for humanity. I hate borders. I hate countries. I hate passports. I don't believe in that. I am a human being. And I think the Israeli himself is a human being. But they have been brainwashed. The Palestinians have done so many different things possible to live in peace. Always took the steps. Even they give up principles in their lives to, uh, to agree on peace agreements. Never happened. Uh, Two-state solution. Never happened. Now we're saying one-state solution. Never happened. Okay, so what? So it is a matter of existing in this world. So we are fighting. We are welcoming and happy to have people are supporting us. When they believe that it's a just cause, of course, and it's their choice. If not, I promise you, my friend, we will never give up. Never, never give up. I am feeling a lot of pain inside of my heart, losing our children. I, I imagine nobody in this world would, would see a child suffer or uh, dead in this way with a huge bomb, the, the most uh, sophisticated weapon on earth, I, I would say, because it coming, it's coming from America, to, to, to bomb a child and, and uh, you don't have tears in, in your eyes and, and you don't have empathy for that. But if we don't lead f within Palestine from here an uprise, so our voice would, would never uh, travel around and, and, and be heard. Besides the pain that I have, I have a lot of hope because I see this time is a completely different time um, as far as I experienced what was going on in Palestine my whole life. This time is different. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. I think we want to live as human beings. We don't want to be treated as slaves or less than animals, according to, you know, many, many peoples. And I'm sure normal society and people in Israel want to do that as well. So what is the price? I tell you what is the solution. It's very easy. Admit that they commit a crime against humanity and our role will be to march for forgiveness. But you don't want either this or that? I'm sorry. We are welcoming everybody from all over the place, including Israelis, to be in Palestine. But if you're not respectful, a decent human being, how can I deal with you? How do you want me to, to accept you? You are finding me daily stopping me hours and hours in checkpoints, humiliating me in front of my child and want me to be silent and shut up and just eat, you know, we provide you some water, some food, and, and that's all. Now, while I'm talking to you, I like to share with you that people um, that they hear us, I tell you, I might be lying. You don't have to believe me. I am an actor. I'm a good actor. I can act, you know. I can be angry. I can be sad. I might be misleading you with my information right now. So what is your job? Your job is to look at the resources, maybe hear my voice and go and search and do your homework in order for you to understand what is going on. Our fight, we are fighting an ethnic cleansing project by the Israelis. Unfortunately, this is the fact. Because calling what is happening in Palestine a conflict, it's a wrong approach. I don't think you will, 
you will arrive to any point. This is not a conflict. It's an occupation. It's an ethnic cleansing project started um, and, and, um, since 1948 until today. Um, and then from this point, we can move ahead and, and uh, try to find uh, uh, different facts about what, what is going on. I think the solution is very easy because many people would think, oh, it's very complicated, the situation in there. No, it's not complicated. It's very easy to understand, I promise you. Yes, 100% there is. And I can prove through thousands and thousands of voices that they were completely blocked from at least minimum post something about the story. And why that is very dangerous? Because within a couple of days, so many different news are happening. So if I limit you or uh, take your access on what you control as a personal account, imagine this is only as a personal account, block you uh, to five days, two weeks from posting and uh, um, uh, updating people on the news. This is a, a, a digital apartheid and uh, discrimination. So now coming to the big channels, uh, I, I can mention names, of course, you know, the, the, in so many different ways they are biased, like, like the BBC, CNN and so on. Uh, they are, de de um, how do you say, in on purpose, trying to bring a narrative above another narrative. But even though this is changing, and I was so surprised to see, for example, an interview with a Palestinian girl on CNN. Why is that happening? Because of you guys. Because people are pressuring them saying, sorry, stop your bullshit. We don't believe anymore what you present to us because we see completely something different. So as we have this apartheid, digital apartheid, um, that it is happening, really is happening. There is also a big pressure from people that comes from people uh, pushing these um, media, media to change their attitude. And we have to keep doing that. I mean, this is such a bullshit if we say a pure race is a human being. We have been brought as human beings to be different. You look different than me, but we can share so many different things. And difference doesn't have to be a threat. Differences have to be, to be something beautiful. Look how beautiful to, to meet different cultures around, uh, around the world. And the, it meet different people, the way how they look, the way their eyes they look. It's a beauty to, to try to understand the differences. Now, uh, what you can do, I think if actually you have and you are sure about what is going on, we say we have the weak faith or the strong faith. The strong faith is to fight. For example, I invite people to join the BDS movement. And the BDS movement is asking for sanction and boycott culturally Israel uh, uh, as an apartheid system uh, that exists. And it's exactly, and even more than the South African uh, apartheid that, uh, that people uh, stood for and fought for it to end, and I hope that this will happen in, in, in Palestine. This is one thing you can do. If you find that difficult, there are so many different ways to connect with, uh, uh, with people and talk to them. Um, you can take their stories and share them. You can, for example, translate a story of a child who just died and uh, translate it into Portuguese so people can understand better if it's a matter of a language. Um, it's not about uh, supporting people with money, for example. Yes, for sure, people need support and, and money, but this is not the whole point. The, the whole point that we need humanity to stand with a human cause, that it is Palestine nowadays, and it exists. It's very, very, very easy to, 
uh, to do such a thing. Just hold the story and, and share it. Because I believe we are, as a human beings, we are a story remain to be told or it's being told uh, already.